Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today and welcome to Quick and Wicked. If you're new here, Quick and Wicked is a segment on my channel for true crime recaps. And today's story is especially heartbreaking as we are discussing the ongoing investigation into the recent murder of 11 year old Maria Gonzalez. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Carmelo Gonzalez recently came to the United States looking for work to support his family back home in Guatemala. And joining him was his 11 year old daughter, Maria, leaving her mother behind. More recently, Maria and her mother, Anna, had a discussion and it was decided that come October, Maria would be coming home for good and Anna would be patiently waiting for the day that she would be reunited with her daughter once again. But unfortunately, that day would never come. It was Saturday, August 12th, 2023, when Maria Gonzalez was awoken by a knock at the front door of her home, an apartment in the main village complex in Pasadena, Texas. Maria had been home alone after her father had left for work just around 9.45 in the morning. Maria's father, Carmelo, had received a text message from her a little after 10 a.m., telling him that she heard somebody knocking at the front door. Carmelo responded, advising his daughter not to open the door as he had just arrived to work. She replied, letting him know that she didn't answer the door and finally saying that she went back to bed. And this would be the last message Carmelo would receive from Maria. Carmelo attempted texting his daughter a few more times, but she didn't respond. He then tried calling her, but his calls went unanswered. As worry began to sink in, Carmelo asked his brother, Maria's uncle, who lived just nearby, if he can quickly stop by the house and check on Maria. Carmelo was sure that he was probably just worried for nothing, but he wanted to make sure that she was okay. But as Carmelo's brother entered the apartment, he reported back to Carmelo, telling him that Maria was nowhere to be found. Around 3 p.m., just five hours after Carmelo had left for work, he returned home to search for Maria hoping that she might have just took a walk around the block and she would be home. He walked into the apartment calling Maria's name, but she didn't respond. He then ran into her bedroom, hoping that maybe she was taking a nap. But when he got there, her bed was empty. Panicked, he goes from one room into another, looking for Maria, searching in the closets in the bathrooms. And then finally, Carmelo found his little girl and his heart sank as his worst nightmare came true. Maria had been found wrapped in a garbage bag, stuffed into a laundry basket, and then shoved underneath the bed. Carmelo immediately called 911, telling the dispatcher that he had found his little girl and she wasn't breathing. Medics arrived at the scene and attempted to revive her, but it wouldn't be long until 11-year-old Maria Gonzalez was pronounced dead at the scene. Later, a medical examiner determined that Maria had died of strangulation by asphyxiation after she was by the unknown assailant. Autopsy reports also showed that Maria had suffered from blunt force trauma to her head. Carmelo sat stunned in utter disbelief, wondering who possibly could have done this to his sweet little girl. Investigators began questioning the residents in the area in hopes of finding a lead into who could have been responsible for such a heinous crime. Upon sweeping the apartment for evidence, they would find their first clue. A key had been found in the Gonzalez residence, but it didn't go to any of the doors. They'd later learned that this key actually went to the apartment just steps away from Maria's home. And this key would prove crucial to the case as it led to the apartment of roommates, three young men, all of which who had already been questioned and seemingly cooperative with the investigation as they had willingly provided their DNA just days prior. So the investigators go back to the apartment to question the men once again. But upon their arrival, police only found two of the three roommates, as the third roommate, who was identified as 18-year-old Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, was nowhere to be found. When investigators asked the roommates about Juan Carlos, they said that they didn't really know him very well, as he had moved in just a few weeks ago, right before Maria's murder. And when officers asked the men if they knew where Juan Carlos was, they had said that he had apparently moved to a new area in hopes of finding work. And finally, the officers asked their roommates about their apartment keys, to which both of the men still had their keys in their possession. Then mentioning that after Juan Carlos had moved out of the apartment, he never returned his key. With all of these details, 
it was at this moment that the Pasadena Police Department announced their first person of interest. year old Juan Garcia Rodriguez, the man investigators are calling a person of interest. Police say he lived at the same apartment complex and has not been seen since. Police Though after DNA was processed, it seems to have been a match as Juan Carlos quickly went from being a person of interest to the prime suspect. On August 19th, he was located and arrested in Louisiana and officially charged with murder. During the week leading up to the arrest, the Pasadena community has been very supportive of the Gonzalez family. Family, friends, and neighbors all gathered for a candlelit vigil as they prayed for Maria and her family. Here, Carmelo can be heard speaking about his daughter. The only thing I ask for from authorities, I want justice to find this person who's guilty, who caused me this great pain in my heart. And while he's speaking in Spanish, and for me, there's still a bit of a language barrier, you can really hear the devastation and heartache in his voice after losing his little girl in such a brutal manner. You can really see the pain in his eyes. It was truly heart-wrenching to watch. Meanwhile, Maria's mom, Anna, has had to experience this pain and devastation being a thousand miles away as she realizes that the day she had been waiting for, the day that she would be able to hug Maria and squeeze her tight and kiss her cheeks, that day would never come. News outlets were able to interview Anna, and this is what she had to say. Es justicia para mi hija. Solamente que encuentren al culpable que sea más pronto posible porque ya va a cumplir ocho días mi hija que ha fallecido y lo que digo yo pues que me perdonen toda la gente pero que sí digo yo las autoridades allá en Estados Unidos, el presidente, que me ayuden a encontrar al culpable. Listening to Maria's parents after they experienced such an incredible loss. It's heartbreaking. No parent should ever have to bury their child. I imagine as the days, weeks, and years following her death, they'll be spending sleepless nights wondering what her last thoughts were or how scared she must have been, being riddled with guilt, wondering the what ifs and whys, somehow finding a reason to blame themselves. But this wasn't their fault. It was this man, this monster, who should never breathe free air again. Carmelo and Anna described Maria as a quiet but good and sweet girl who had just turned 11 just a few weeks before her death. She had her whole life ahead of her until this monster took it away. And when he killed Maria, he didn't just take her life, but he killed a part of every single person that loved and cared about this young, sweet, innocent girl. And as much as I hope that they find peace through this heartache, I don't believe that they will ever be the same. After the arrest of Juan Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, the Gonzalez family expressed gratitude to the Pasadena Police Department for working so quickly to put this cold-blooded murderer into custody. In an interview, Carmelo said, and I translate, quote, this arrest has brought the family and the community some peace. We are extremely thankful that he cannot cause this type of pain to anybody again. I ask for those who are in charge to give us justice. May he be burdened with the full weight of the law for what he has done to my daughter." End quote. And I'm wholeheartedly with Carmelo and the rest of Maria's family. I hope this man receives the harshest possible punishment for what he did to such a beautiful and innocent young girl in what should have been the safest place for her in her home. Now, as I'm recording this video on August 20th, I'm not sure if these claims are legitimate, but some reports are claiming that just after his apprehension, Juan Carlos has made a full confession to the murder of Maria Gonzalez. And of course, I hope these claims are true. And you can go ahead and call me spiteful, but I certainly hope that he quickly learns what American prisons are like for men who hurt children, especially in the way that he did. Now, as of now, Maria's family is trying to get her body back to Guatemala so they can bury her at home. If you want to help bring Maria back home, you can donate to the GoFundMe that I will provide in the description box down below. But other than that, that's all I have for this case for now. If the claims are true and he really did confess, it seems like it will be a pretty open and shut case. But what are your thoughts? What do you think the punishment for such a crime should be? Let me know what you think down below.
Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.